Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Mother in Sunday service. It's a special day for mothers. A call to worship. Lord, open our eyes to your presence. Open our ears to your call. Open our hearts to your love that we may give ourselves to you and walk before you as children of light. Through him, who is the light of the world, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is well known by all the children around the world and all mothers around the world. It is hymn 100, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, for the Lord God made them all. Wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. 
Now let us come to God with a word of prayer. Almighty and Heavenly Father, you are our creator. You created each one of us. You are our Father. You gave us clothes to wear, food to eat, and roofs over our, and roofs over our heads. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you have given us. And on this special day, we thank you for mothers all over the world, wherever they are. We thank you for our friends and for our relatives. And for our brothers and sisters in Christ. For you made each one of them in our mother's womb. To Heavenly Father, we thank you. But Heavenly Father, we ask you to forgive us for any wrongdoings we have done to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And often we are so slow to say sorry. So let us put them things right by saying sorry. So thank you, Heavenly Father, for forgiveness. You gave us your Son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world to be among us, to be an earthly being, who came from heaven to earth. He came to guide to care, to love, and to pray. And through the universal prayer, he taught us. So let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses who sin against us. Forgive us the evil that is done to us. This is a different version of the Lord's Prayer. So Heavenly Father, you are the Lord. You are the guide you guide our mothers to where, where you want them to be. We offer this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. A familiar story. During this time, a man from the tribe of Levi married a woman of his own tribe, and she bore him a son. When she saw what a fine baby he was, she hid him for three months. But when she could not hide him any longer, she took a basket made of reeds and covered it with tar to make it watertight. She put the baby in it and then placed it in the tall grass at the edge of the river. 
the baby's sister stood some distance away to see what would happen to him. The king's daughter came down to the river to bathe, while her servants walked along the bank. Suddenly, she noticed the basket in the tall grass and sent a slave woman to get it. The princess opened it and saw a baby boy. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked her, shall I go and call a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for you? Please do, she answered. So the girl went and brought the baby's own mother. The princess told the woman, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So she took the baby and nursed him. Later, when the child was old enough, she took him to the king's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. She said to herself, I pulled him out of the water, and so I name him Moses. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is 372, 372. Come down, O love divine, seek thou this soul of mine, and visit with thy, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and visit it with thy old ardour glowing, 372.
And now we'll have a New Testament reading from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. You are the people of God. He loved you and chose you for his own. So then you must clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with one another and forgive one another whenever any of you has a complaint against someone else. You must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. And to all these qualities add love, which binds all things together in perfect unity. The peace that Christ gives is to guide you in the decisions you make. For it is to this peace that God has called you together in the one body. And be thankful. Christ's message in all its richness must live in your hearts. Teach and instruct each other with all wisdom. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Sing to God with thanksgiving in your hearts. Everything you do or say then should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus, as you give thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. And now let us sing again. Him 588, I come with joy, a child of God, forgiven, loved and free, the life of Jesus to recall, in, in love I lay it down for me, 588. <coughs>
and a gospel reading taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 33 to 35. The child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this, ch this child is chosen by God for the destruction and salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God, which many people will sp speak against, and so reveal their, and so reveal their, th their secret thoughts, and sorrow like a sharp heart, sword will break your own heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We thank you for those readings. We ask your blessing on this word. Amen. Mothering Sunday. A time of love and a time of sharing. As we meet together this morning in fellowship, we celebrate Mother's Day. It is otherwise known as Mothering Sunday. It is to show how much we love our mothers. Or are there other reasons why we celebrate Mother's Day? When you look at the story of Moses, he probably thought, a great deal about his mother in his later life because she actually saved his life. Can you imagine what it is like when the king announced that all male babies were to be killed? Probably pure panic amongst all mothers. But here is the mother of Moses who made, who made sure that he was going to live. And because she loved him so much, she placed him in a basket and hid him in the bulrushes. But was this part of God's plan? Here we see a mother saving a child and the humanity of the king's daughter who adopted him. The name Moses means saved from the water. The mother of Moses still cared for him by working for the princess in the king's palace. But how difficult was it for them, for them all, for here was Moses with two mothers. Was he lucky or not? Did he know his real mother? Or did he just acknowledge the princess as his mother? Moses was loved by both. The women who kept him safe. Just as Moses had been given a new life, here we see Paul writing to people at Colossia that they must stop listening to false teachings cast off their old life and take on the new life in Christ. The peace that Christ gives is to guide you in the decisions you make, for it is this peace that God called you together as one body, teaches each other with wisdom, sing to God with thanksgiving in your heart. And then when you look at Luke, Joseph and Mary are taking Jesus to the temple for the ceremony of purification. As the law of Moses, as the law of Moses commanded it, written in the law of the land. Every 
firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. There they met a God-fearing name, man named Simeon. The Bible dictionary says, an aged saint who visited the temple when Jesus was being presented before the Lord and, utterly lofty, and uh, uttered lofty words of thanksgiving and prophecy. The parents of Jesus were amazed at what Simeon said. He blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child was chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. Can you imagine the look on Mary's face and how she felt when he said these words? You will notice that these words were only, only for Mary. <coughs> Simeon foretells the sorrow coming on Mary like a sharp sword peace in her heart. Jesse Ryle commentary says, this was specially fulfilled when she stood by the cross and saw her son dying there. Might not our Lord be reminding her of this prophecy when in that solemn hour he, he, commanded, her, he commanded her to his disciple John, saying, Behold thy mother in order that she might have a friend in a time of need. But as we look at a world, a big world, there are many people who are celebrating Mother's Day. But how do we see Mother's Day? How do we see a mother? For she may have many different roles. We may see her as one who nurtures and supports and supports us through our lives. They are there for us when we need them. But how often do we take it for granted? But why do we celebrate Mother's Day? It goes back as far as the 17th century. It was a day in the life of those who worked in the big houses and were allowed to visit their parents once a year. It was also a time for those who went back to their mother's, mother church. It is a time for honouring mothers with gifts. Mother's Day drifted away after many years but was reborn again in the 19th century by the Americans. Is it now too commercial? Has it, has it lost the true sense? And has it been taken away? What about those children who are orphaned? How do they feel when they have to share a person called a house mother, between 20 or more? Is the love they share the same as a mother gives to her children? Look at Mother Teresa, who saved children from the streets and put them into a home. There are those of us who love our mothers. But what? about those who excuse me but what about those whose experience of a mother may not be pleasant how many of you have seen the film good night mr tom where willie the young boy is traumatized by his mother but is only shown love by mr tom this does not just happen in films. It, it is part of life today. 
but how much is a mother worth? Do we ever work out what she really does when we're working around the house? Or do we take it for granted? How did our grandmothers manage when they had children running around and there was no play school? Especially baking, especially when baking homemade bread and meals, etc. No convenience food. How many of you were taught to bake by mothers and grandmothers? No automatic washing machines. A post tub. Can you remember them? Many of the young mothers we may never have heard of them. They were never they were they were never heard to say that they were depressed. Or was it a case that they did not have time to spare or time on their hands to th think that they were depressed? Many years ago, I found a letter, a letter from a mother. Here is a letter from a mother. It may ring some bells with some of you. And it reads like this. Dear children, I am tired of doing the washing up, cleaning, laundry, shopping, and defrain the dog all on my own. From now on, I am going to charge you for my services. Here is last week's bill. Three meals for three people, 60 pound. Cleaning the bedroom, 30 pound. Putting away any clothes thro thrown on the bedroom floor. Emptying the bin, cleaning the bath, toilets, floor, paintwork, £100. Shopping, £25. Darning, mending, ironing, £30. Answering phone to your friends, no mobile phones then, £10. Praying to school and back, to guides, football, Disco on Friday night, £50. Laundry bills, £30. Nursing fees, headache cures, cough mixture, hot water bottles. For those who have not been well, £40. Total, £375. Is this what a mother is worth? Where is the love in this bill? What kind of price would you put on it? Given freely by God, shared with one another. Children with tea towels in their hands, sheeply, sheeply looking at their mother. Have they got the message? Maybe just for one day, then it'll all go back to normal. Did they take their mother for granted? And when you look at the stories of Moses and Jesus, we know that their mo mothers did, they, did what they had to do. Firstly, it was part of God's plan. And secondly, it was because they loved their sons just as God loved them. How, do we, how does God feel about the way we treat our mothers? The Bible says, honour your father and your mother. It doesn't say, honour your mother and your father. Does this mean the way we treat them, mums and dads, aren't the only ones that we take for granted. 
many people take God for granted. They make God out of their possessions, money, icons, and maybe their ambition. How often do they give God a second thought? Maybe when they need help. But God wants us to talk to him every day and never take him for granted. The Bible says that you must never have no other gods but me. Amen. And here is an ode written by an anonymous son, an ode for Mothering Sunday. Oh, I'm ever so nice to my mum, except for the times when I am not. I'm usually helpful, considerate and kind, and nice a young son to his mum who would you wouldn't find, though she has to put up with a lot. I help her with some of the chores, especially with washing the pots, though they tend to stay greasy when washed by me. I leave smear marks on the glasses I just cannot see. And the tea towel gets tied in knots. I've never been rude to my mum or taken her efforts for granted. Though I tend to sound off if she says, make your bed. And she'd better be there when there's pains in my head. But here in my heart, there's planted a bouquet of roses for mum with one or two thistles as well. For she sometimes insists that I tidy my room, sweet clean my bad habits with mother's new broom, or remove my old socks when they smell. But mum is an angel, is an angel to me, except, except for times when she ain't. For she's got a loud voice. Yes, it wants shattered glass. And if she clips your ear, it stays clipped. Let that pass. No, she isn't a plaster saint. But today I can say thank you, Mum. For though I can be moody and cross, you will always forgive and say, never mind, son. <clears throat> you know most of the good things and the bad things that I have done. I reckon we know who is boss. Me on Tuesday and Friday and mum on the rest of the week. Our next hymn is 186, 186. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Unnumbered blessing give my spirit voice. Tender to me the promise of his word. In God my saviour shall my heart rejoice.
And now let us pray. When I say, Lord, hear us, can you say, Lord, graciously hear us? Let there be respect for the earth, peace for its people, love in our lives, delight in the good, forgiveness for all past wrongs, and from now on, a new start. Almighty and heavenly God, when we wander from the way, call us back. When we stray from truth, redirect us. When we do not live life to the full, inspire and refresh us. May we and your whole church follow him in this way, the truth and the life. We pray for all who have wandered from that faith, for all who have lost touch with you and your love. We remember all who are pilgrims and seekers, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for all who have been separated from loved ones through war or circumstance. For those who have left home and have become lost. We remember those who live on the streets of our cities. We pray for all who live in poverty and debt. Lord, we turn to you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our families and our parents, especially this day, our mothers, and all who love us. We pray especially for those who are dear to us, but with whom we have lost contact. We ask your blessing upon all who are taken into care, all separated from loved ones, through illness and through death. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for places where your glory is marred or scarred, for all who live in slum dwellings, for all who do not have enough to eat or someone to care for them. For those who are on the bread line, who don't have enough money to feed their children. This is a world of want at the moment. But we remember the lonely and the depressed people and those who are distressed. We ask your blessing on all who are ill, at home, or in care homes, or in hospital. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
We pray for all who have called, excuse me, we pray for all whom you have called home in your kingdom. Where sorrow and pain are no more. We pray for the mothers that we've lost. We pray for the stepmothers that take on the challenge. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. For those we know all over the world. For those we are struggling. We pray for the church here and all the families that they may enjoy getting together with their mothers, maybe having a meal together or taking her out or maybe giving her flowers. We offer this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Thou thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices whose wondrous gifts things has done in whom the world rejoices. And after this, this hymn there'll be flowers or plants given out in the service. So let us sing together Now we thank we all our God. And I wish every mother on Sunday a lovely day, wherever they may be. And now a blessing. The Father comes to meet you in love. The Son comes to meet you with forgiveness. The Spirit comes to refresh and restore you. And the blessing of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.
Bye.